All right, if you will, uh, join me in a nice warm welcome. Uh, Dr. Renati is going to talk about Ayurvedic medicine. And of course, I think that's a subject about which uh, we know very little in this country. Uh, and I'm one of the prime candidates for knowing very little about it. So let's give him a nice warm welcome from India, Subhash <laughs> Renati. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be talking about Ayurveda and Yoga. And since both of these ancient systems are from Vedas, as per the Vedic tradition, I will start my lecture with a small prayer for all of us. Please bear with me. The, the prayer is in Sanskrit. I will translate it into English later on. <clears throat> Bhadram Karane Bhishrunyam Deva Bhadram Pashet Makshabhirya Jatra Tirai Rangais Tushtuan Sastanubhi Vyashema Deva Hitam Yadayu Om Swastin Indro Bruthashravaha Swastina Pusha Vishwaveda Swastina Starksho Arishtane Mihi Swastino Brahaspati Radhatuhu Om Shanti 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 Well, the meaning of this Vedic prayer is O oh God, grant us that our ears may always hear good things, our eyes witness always auspicious things. May our bodies be healthy and acquire brilliance and strength. May we enjoy the full term of 100 years of life allotted to us. And may we serve the God and the community. Let all gods protect us so that we can fulfill our desire. And let there be peace, peace and peace forever. I hope you will all agree it's a very good prayer. So with this prayer, I will start my introduction on Ayurveda. <clears throat> May I have my first slide, please? This is uh, Lord Dhanvantari, the god of Ayurveda. As uh, you can see, he has in his four hands, four different things. One hand has holds a leech which is used for therapeutic bloodletting. The other hand has a surgical weapon. The third hand has a conch as he comes out of the sea. And the fourth hand has a potion for a longevity. Now this god of Ayurveda is supposed to have started the surgical branch of Ayurveda. And therefore is always worshipped by all the physicians who practice Ayurveda in India and is known as Lord Dhanvantari. Well, now let us see briefly what is Ayurveda. Ayurveda is a science of life. Well, there are two words, Ayu and Veda. Ayu means life and Veda is science. Well, Ayurveda teaches us everything that is beneficial and detrimental to the life. Things like food and drinks, atmosphere, behavior in the society, how you should behave in your daily routine, how you should adjust yourself to the climate, to various seasons. So Ayurveda is a science of an entire life. Similarly, yoga, the word first has been found in Vedas as a reference. It says that science for controlling mind for spiritual illumination. So yoga and Ayurveda, they are the both sciences which tells us 
how we should behave in our daily life. Now, as you see, here is a picture of a Vedic scriptures. Now, Vedas are probably the most ancient written records available on this earth. Vedas dates back to about 1500 to 2500 years BC. There are four Vedas, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda and Atharva Veda. Well, when the art of writing was not available, all these Vedas were remembered by certain metrical chants and they were passed on from generations to generations till the art of writing was established. In this picture you see a writing of Veda on Bhurja Patra that is on the bark of a tree. Now yoga is a science of linking individual self to the universal self and both the sciences aim at developing physical, mental, emotional, psychological and spiritual level of the human being. Now yoga and Ayurveda they are both the holistic sciences. Both say that the man is a combination of body, mind and soul. So it is a truly integral system through which both these sciences look at the human being. We all know now that body and mind affect each other and form a seed of disease. Therefore, ultimate aim of both these sciences is to end all the sufferings and to achieve the self-realization. Now, truly speaking, Ayurveda is a medical philosophy. In the correct sense of understanding, it is not only a pathy because if you were, if you look into the dictionary for the word pathy, its meaning is the treatment of a sufferer. Of course, Ayurveda does treat a patient, a disease, but basically it tells us how to maintain health, prolong healthy life and therefore it is basically medical philosophy. It believes that healing process is within every individual and you must allow each individual to start this healing process. You just cannot depend on outside measures. Once you allow this healing process to take place, then the disease go away very quickly. Now yoga is also not a posture. Many people think that yoga is a posture. Two years back in New York, I met a man and he said, I am a yoga master. Well, I asked him, what do you mean by that? Well, he said, I can carry out any posture. Well, it does not mean that yoga is only a posture. <clears throat> As you know, yoga is also a science of a life which is basically aiming at a far higher level than the physical body. Well, here it will be pertinent to let me tell you the situation of Ayurveda and yoga in India. Ayurveda is being practiced since thousands of years in India and in adjoining countries like Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh and in some parts of Indonesia also. Well, I would say that 500,000 people of all these countries are being treated and protected by Ayurveda and now in India we have about 140 medical Ayurvedic colleges where the student has to take four and a half years education to get a degree and then one year's internship before he goes out into the practice. Nearly every year 5000 Ayurvedic physicians go out and they have the facility to carry out postgraduate education right up to the PhD level. So this is in short about the situation of Ayurveda in India. Now in this slide you see the ancient Ayurvedic master physician called as Sushruta who founded the surgical branch 
after Dhanvantari and practiced in a very good manner. You will be surprised to know that the method explained by Sushruta of rhinoplasty is still today in practice as it is. He was a great surgeon himself. Initially, Ayurveda had eight branches and yoga also had eight branches. The initial eight branches of Ayurveda were as follows, Kaya Chikitsa means internal medicine, Bala Chikitsa included pediatrics and gynecology, Graha Chikitsa included psychiatry, Urdhvanga Chikitsa means ear, nose and throat diseases treatment, Shalya Chikitsa is surgical treatment, Daushtra Chikitsa means toxicology, Jara Chikitsa that is science of rejuvenation and Vrusha Chikitsa is science of aphrodisiacs. We will come to these parts, some of important parts in my lecture later on. Now yoga as you all know is also comprised of eight basic parts. First two are Yama and Niyama that is for cleaning body and speech. Then comes asana or posture for bringing steadiness to the body and mind. Then the pranayama or the breathing practice. Pratyahara for controlling the sense organs. Dharana that is concentration. Dhyana that is meditation. And lastly samadhi or the self-realization. <clears throat> now Ayurveda uses lot of herbs mineral products, metals, animal products and products from sea such as shells, corals etc. In India we have a variety of mixed climate. We have highest mountain of Himalayas where the peaks are always covered with snow. We have a desert where a very hot climate from 40 to 46 degrees centigrade is always present. We have some regions where there is highest rainfall and we have a 1500 miles of coastal region. So there is no dearth of herbs for Ayurveda. Surprisingly many of these important herbs are also found in Europe and United States. Of course some of the important herbs are in extinction and now in India we are trying to protect all these important herbs. We will come to in my lecture later on how we use these herbs and mineral products. Now the basic objects in life are spiritual happiness that is dharma that is duty to the self and duty which you have to do to the society. Moksha is a self realization, physical happiness, kama that is enjoyment or achievement and artha that is having gaining some wealth. Now let us consider some important basic principles of Ayurveda. The first basic principle is man is miniature of nature. Nature is macrocosm and man is microcosm. Well that is why since we are the part of the universe, whatever the principles that are present in the universe are also present in each of us of course in a very minute amount. And therefore, as we can get cure from all the things that are available in the nature or the universe itself. Now Ayurveda believes that the first basic things that are in the universe are trigunas or omni substances. Now these things are sattva, rajas and tamas. Now sattva is a knowledge or consciousness. Rajas is a motion or action and Tamas is inertia. Also these can be called as Sattva is an ideological conception, Raja is material reorganization and Tama is inhibitory action. Now if we take into consideration any new thing or anything in the world, we will know that for its formation all these three things are essential. For instance, if we want to build a new house, then there is some ideological conception in the architect's mind that how his house will be. According to that, he starts organizing materials, cement, iron, etc. And when everything is complete, he stops. So in all the new things or existing things, 
although these are non material substances which are called as omni substances these are essential sattva raja and tama ayurveda believes the philosophy of sankhya and these three substances are very much essential for the formation of universe as well as for the creation of a man and these three omni substances they later on start or form psychological constitution of a person now let us come to the, some basic material things the entire universe and the man is formed by five primordial pentards these are prithvi or solid states aap or fluidity tej or light and temperature vayu that is movement and akash that is space or ether we all know that every individual has all these elements in minute amounts in our human body we have lots of spaces cavities various kinds of movements right from cellular movements to the gross movements we have a digestive fire which represents teja lots of fluids are in our body which represents minute amount of aap and our bones hairs and nails constitute hardness or parthiva elements so for the formation of universe as well as man these five basic primordial pentads are essential now let us come to the biological humors from the five primordial pentads tridoshas or three biological humors which control all the activities of a man they are formed now prithvi that is hardness and fluidity they form together the biological water humor or kapha tej in a minute form in the human body forms biological fire humor or pitta and vayu and akash form biological air humor or vata now these three biological humors they control all the physiological activities of the human being as you can see in this slide <coughs> vata is responsible for the propulsion for the impulses from brain to the sense organ or from sense organs to the brain for expulsion of various waste products for respiratory and cardiac movements pitta represents pitta or biological fire humor is responsible for the conversion of food into the tissues and waste products for the energy for all enzymatic activities and kapha or biological water humor is responsible for the structure for the stability for interlinking of tissues for strength and for immunity the same thing has been explained further in these slides that functions of biological air humor it controls all the movements cardio respiratory excuse me for some there are some spelling mistakes gastrointestinal transmission of nerve impulses cell division differentiation layer formation and control over mental activities as well as it is responsible for the destruction now the functions of biological fire humor is responsible for digestion at both the levels gastrointestinal as well as cellular level regulation of heat or temperature sensation of thirst and hunger and intelligence and the same case is with biological water humor as i told you that is responsible for the protection strength and immunity now all these humors have been further classified into five types according to its site and function and biological air humor or vata has been classified into prana vyana apana samana and udana let us not go into these details <coughs> biological fire humor has been classified further into five types pachaka ranjaka bhajak alochaka and sadaka and biological water humor has been classified into another five types that is kledak bodak avalambak shleshaka and tarpak now all these types they are at a different sites in the body and they carry out various functions according to the according to all the uh, functions just now which we have seen now 
Ayurveda considers body as composed of three main elements. One is dhatus or the tissues, they are seven in number. Then the waste products or malas and biological humors or the doshas which are responsible for carrying out all physiological activity. Now here is an interesting phenomena. Yoga and Ayurveda, they both accept the principle of dual principle of Agni and Soma, that is male and female energy. Now if you consider the meaning of Hatha Yoga, Ha means sun and Tha means moon. Human body is also comprised of these two elements. Our right side is sun prominent or hot and our left side is moon prominent or cold. Therefore, yoga has explained that on our right side is a pingala nadi and on our left side is ida nadi. Now, this is a very interesting phenomena that all of us we know that the nose has been divided by a single septum but the prominent breathing is only from one nostril. Well, it is very easy to understand this if you just place a palm in front of your nose and breathe out forcibly, you will see that your prominent breathing at this moment is either from the right nostril or from the left nostril only. Well, yoga believes that if we can achieve the equilibrium of this breathing, then human body will have a perfect health. But many a times this does not happen because whenever the outside conditions or the climate is uh, cold, then the right nostril breathing is prominent because right side is dominant in hot structures. And when outside climate is very cold, hot, then the left side breathing is prominent. And Ayurveda has used this particular breathing technique for treating various diseases. What we do is simply to plug either of the nostrils by a simple cotton swab. So only right nostril breathing is advised when anabolic conditions and diseases are in existence. For instance, obesity, edema, muscle stiffness, etc. I still remember a case about four years back. I had a patient who, who had a fall, who was a sailor on the ship and had a fall from about 30 feet. He had a severe injury to his vertebral column and developed paraplegia with the stiff muscles. Well, they treated him for about four months and said, well, we cannot do anything. So he was, he came to us and he was admitted to our Ayurvedic hospital. Of course, along with right nostril breathing, we also gave him various kinds of massage and Ayurvedic medicines. So outwardly it looks very simple that only right or left nostril breathing can treat certain diseases, but it is a fact. Only a word of caution is that we have to start this either side nostril breathing in a stepwise increasing manner. That means on the first day, you ask the patient to breathe from right or left nostril for about 30 seconds and slowly you increase this time period. Similarly, only left nostril breathing is advised in catabolic diseases, for instance in cancer, weight loss, paralysis with flaccid muscles. So this is a type of a treatment in which both yoga and Ayurveda is combined together. In India now we have hospitals where the patients are treated with both these pathies or sciences together. Now what is a health according to Ayurveda and yoga? The health of an individual depends on his physical, psychological and spiritual status. Now a healthy person, in a healthy person there should be an equilibrium of biological humors, equilibrium of tissues, waste products and a good agni or the digestive activity and equilibrium of mental activity also. <clears throat> now we come to the Another important basic principle of Ayurveda and that is constitution. 
Well, we have already heard from various speakers in the past that in homeopathy and in immunogen therapy treating AIDS also, the people are now considering that every individual is a different person. No two individuals are alike, not only in body frame or the psychological activities, but each of us individual differ in physical, physiological, psychological and even our biochemical activities are different. So, each of us individual must know what his own constitution is. According to Ayurveda, the constitution is predominance of biological humors at the time of birth. So, they decide physiological, psychological activities of that particular individual. And once this constitution is formed, it is a permanent affair for that particular individual. Now, constitutions, somatic or physical constitutions are of seven types, only vata, pitta and kapha that means individuals in whom biological air humor is predominant is called as vata constitution, individuals in whom biological fire humor is predominant is called as pitta constitution and individuals in whom biological water humor is predominant are called kapha constitution. Similarly, dual type of constitutions are also found vata pitta, pitta kapha and vata kapha and the last type is of sama prakriti or in which all the three bi biological humors are in equilibrium. Now, the important thing is how to know what is our own constitution. Well, very briefly I will go through the saline characteristics of the constitution. Now, usually Vata constitution people or in whom biological air humor is predominant, they are tall and lean, their skin is dry and rough and cool, their hairs are also curly, kinky, black or brown, their teeth have a tendency to develop caries, the joints are often produce sounds like crackling, their appetite is very irregular, sometimes they can digest meat and fish in a huge amounts, the next day even a soup is impossible for them to digest. So, the appetite is irregular, the mind is unsteady, they are talkative in nature and usually their bowels are constipated. They are prone for arthritis, nervous diseases, they are always worry themselves and feel themselves insecure. Now, pitta type of individuals in whom biological fire humor is predominant, their body frame is of a medium size, they have a smooth muscles, their skin is smooth and warm, slightly oily, they have excessive appetite and thirst, their hairs fall so they form early baldness, they have a hot temperament, profuse sweating, they do not tolerate heat their mind is sharp, aggressive in nature, they take quick decisions. Most of these individuals are actors and artists, they like to dominate others, they have a leadership tend activities and they are prone for hypertension, hyperacidity and water humor is predominant. Their body frame is large, thick, stout and robust, they are usually overweight, their skin is thick oily, cool and pale, their hairs are glistening, dark or white, their, they have very low appetite and thirst, their joints and muscles are extremely strong, they can withstand lot of work, <coughs> they are steady going nature. These people are very good for administrative and executive jobs, they are calm and stable and devoted type. That means, if there is a couple of having a kapha constitution together, then their marriage lasts forever because they are devoted to each other. They are prone for hypercholesterol, arthritis and obesity. Now, these are the some important factors of constitution. So, each of us individual in order to maintain health must know his own constitution. Why? Because as I said, no two individuals are alike and even if we take two individuals having the same age, sex, 
race, height and body weight, we will find that these two individuals for maintaining health their requirements differ very much. One will require large amounts of foods and drinks, the other will require very small amounts. One will prefer hot food, the other will prefer a cold food and things like that. So to maintain health, one must know his own constitution. Similarly, to treat diseases, Ayurvedic physician always first understands or tries to understand the constitution. Because once the constitution is understood, then it is easier to treat a person. For instance, a vata type of individual or in, whose, in whom biological air humor is predominant, as I told you, he is usually having dry, cool and light qualities. So he should take always hot food and drinks in a s small amounts and likewise. So according to the constitution, to maintain health, every individual has to take the contradicting characters to that particular biological air humor. Now this is regarding the physical constitution. Similarly, the psychic constitution is of three types. Sattvic constitution in whose sattva guna or sattva quality is more, rajasika constitution and tamasic constitution. Now this is also very important to understand what kind of psychological constitution you have. Now the person having the sattvic constitution is usually a health conscious person. He has a good intellect and a memory and always tries for a more knowledge, usually is a polite person. Rajasic type of an individual is a brave and jealous, is a dynamic, tries to overpower others, is ambitious always and he always strives for more position, more wealth. Basically he is not a health conscious, but if convinced, later on he follows rules and regulations of health very correctly. The last con constitution that is tamasic constitution, well these people are usually lazy, they do not uh, they do not go for knowledge and other things and neither they are very health conscious also. So these are the two basic important differences of constitution. Now to understand constitution, pulse examination is also very important. An Ayurvedic physician always prefers to examine the pulse of a patient early in the morning. Usually the radial pulse is examined, right hand of men and left hand of women. And from the pulse one can easily understand what kind of biological air humor is predominant in that particular individual and similarly what kind of diseases he is going to suffer from. Now this is a typical South Indian food dish we have just now heard from Dr. Vitegar that how food is important not only in diabetes and other diseases but food is an extremely important thing in our daily life because food we always consume and medicine we take once in a while. So to understand the qualities of the food is an extremely important thing. Now Ayurveda has advocated all kinds of foods including meat, fish and other things according to the type of the disease. But if you want to practice yoga and achieve certain things, then the yoga advises only a sattvic food. That means a food having more sattva quality. Now what, sat what is the food which has a better sattva quality? Usually to gain sattvic qualities in you, yoga advises to have all fruits, most of the vegetables except garlic and onion, rice, wheat and oat, green grams which, which are known as moong beans are always good, usually all kinds of seeds and nuts are good, dairy products excluding I mean yogurt or of course in a small amount it is alright. Clarified butter or ghee is uh, very good for increasing sattva quality. Spices like ginger, cinnamon and cardamom are good. Pure spring water and no meat and fish. That is what yoga advises to have a sattvic food to have more sattvic qualities in, in a person. Now how we should understand food? To understand food and the herbs, we have to understand the herbal and food 
energetics. Now the energetics are based on three things, one is the test, second is the potency and the third is post digestive effect. These are called as rasa, virya and vipak. Now the tastes are six, they are sweet as sugar, sour as lemon, salty as salt, bitter as rhubarb, pungent as chilies and astringent as in salads. Now these six tastes they either increase or decrease a particular biological humor. For instance, sweet, sour and salty they increase biological water humor or kapha. That means if a person is suffering from cold and cough and has a lot of mucus in his respiratory tract, he should consume less amounts of sweet, sour and salty things and have more of bitter pungent and astringent things. Now the potencies of the food and herbs are of two types, one is hot and cold. Pungent, sour and salty, salty tastes are hot in nature, hot in potency, while sweet, bitter and astringent are cold in potency. Similarly, after the digestion, there are three effects of these either food or herb energetics, they are sweet, sour or pungent. Similarly, to, to understand what kind of food one should eat, he has also to know the 20 qualities of foods. <coughs> now there are coming to the treatment part, there are five purificatory procedures adopted in Ayurveda. The first is emesis that is therapeutic vomiting, the second is purgation, therapeutic purgation. Third is enema or medicated enemas. The fourth is a rhine or nasal drops. The fifth is bloodletting. And in yoga, they use six types of purificatory procedures. Dhauti is a purificatory procedure for, for cleansing the stomach. Nauli, that is the movement of abdominal walls. Neti, that is cleansing the nasal passages and kapalabhati is also used for the same purpose. Water enema is also included in yoga purificatory procedures and the last is trataka that means gazing constantly at one object for concentrating on the particular thing for increasing concentration of the mind. Out of all these six yoga purificatory procedures probably neti is a very easy procedure is used for cleansing nasal passages by water. For this a neti pot is used which is a very simple pot having a nozzle and in this pot a lukewarm water with a simple salt is added. Take the pot into your right hand and put the nozzle into you the right nostril. Tilt the head slightly backwards and to the left and allow the water to flow into the nose the water will come out from the left nostril or from the mouth. Repeat the procedure from the left side also. This will clean all the sinuses and lot of research has been already done on this neti procedure which is called a jala neti or cleansing the sinuses by simple lukewarm salt water. And it has been found that for patients suffering from allergic rhinitis, asthma and sinusitis this is a very simple but effective procedure. Now next we come to another important aspect of yoga that is pranayama. Now prana means, prana means breathing and ayama means pause. So pranayama is actually a conscious rhythmic breathing. Now to carry out pranayama the best thing is to achieve a lotus position spread out your palm in front of you, keep the thumb on the right nostril and little and index finger on the right nostril and the two middle and index finger at the base of the nose. Now usually pranayama is done by alternate nostril breathing and it has four basic phases. The first is puraka that is inhalation, the second is holding the breath that is called as internal kumbhaka, the third is rechaka that is expelling the breath and the fourth is again holding your breath which is called as external kumbhaka. So these are basic four phases in pranayama 
and during this pranayama or breathing exercise you have to concentrate your mind on the breathing and the breath activities now lot of research has already been done on this breathing activities as far as the various diseases of heart and lungs and it has been found out that for ischemic heart diseases for hypertension pranayama helps a lot if it is coupled with some postures like shavasana that is assuming a dead body posture as far as purificatory procedures are concerned kapalabhati is also extremely useful for some digestive disturbances now we will turn our attention to another factor which is very interesting in ayurveda and that is massage massage is done by various kinds of oils now here you see a patient is being massaged by an, a certain type of a oil now according to constitution we use different types of oils for vata constitution we use oil prepared with asparagus which is a common ingredient of our soup here for pick the type of individual we use sandalwood oil for kapha kapha type of individual we use mustard oil or oil in which a saffron is prepared now for carrying out massage marma points are extremely important marma is a vital point on the body there are 107 marma or vital points just to classify them upper and lower limbs contain 22 each points that is total 44 points abdomen and thorax contain 12 points head and neck contains 37 points and back and trunk back and trunk contains 14 points so while carrying out massage we must pay attention to all these vital points which are called as marmas and similarly if we know that a patient is suffering from a certain disorder then we can also use these marma points to stimulate internal organs for instance there is a marma point which is called as kshipra marma between the thumb and the index finger now if we stimulate this point by certain oils then we can stimulate the heart of the patient similarly there is a kurpara marma point at the elbow and if it is chosen on the right side of the elbow and if we start massaging this point we can stimulate the liver of the patient also so massage has its particular place in the ayurvedic treatments now there are various kinds of massage now here you see a child is being massaged with the rice bowl now this is called as pizichil which is a very particular type of massage in kerala south india now what is done here is rice is taken with husk it is packed in a cotton bundle as you can see and this rice is cooked in milk and certain decoctions of the herbs when the rice gets cooked then it is taken out and when it is quite hot so this particular type of massage is extremely useful for certain diseases like paresis polio pseudo muscular dystrophy and multiple sclerosis now i must say that we cannot completely cure multiple sclerosis we can just halt the process of the disease and of course only massage is not helpful but along with the massage we give medicated enemas also now usually a medicated enema consists of a lukewarm water decoction of certain herbs honey and salt so coupled with all these things you can treat various muscular disorders now let us come to another factor this is also a called as a massage by feet which is also a very typical method in kerala and it has some advantages over the regular massage which we usually do by our hands now for purification as i told you there are five methods but before these purificatory me measures usually the patient is has to undergo two types of preliminary therapies one is a sweat therapy and the other is 
oil therapy. Now for sweat therapy or sudation, the patient is kept on a cot which is perforated and under his cot various types of decoctions of herbs are put and the steam which is coming out of decoction is used for this sweat method. Now as I told you we use lot of herbs and mineral products here you see the powder of coral. We use coral ash for treating various disorders of pitta or biological fire humor. Now for treating minerals and metals we purify them before they are used for human beings. Now this is a simple mortar and pestle called as Kalvayantra in which a powder of a mineral or a metal is kept and over which a juice of a certain herbs is poured and then the whole mixture is triturated till the powder becomes dry. So this is done once and usually seven types times when this is done then the particular substance is useful for the human purpose. So this is a simple method which is called as mortar and pestle trituration. There are other methods also now as you see this is a, a machine through which this particular trituration can be carried out instead of hands. Now this is called as a closed shell cooking in which a glass shell is taken and a metal is kept there inside which is of course first purified by various uh, juices, herbal juices and then it is heated. Now let us come to another very interesting phenomena, uh, Ayurvedic branch which is called as science of rejuvenation. Now who does not want to live longer? Everybody of us wants to live longer. We all want that we should be always in a healthy spirit and we should always live for a very long, long time. Now this science of rejuvenation helps person to live a longer time. Actually it is called as Rasayana. Rasa means the first tissue or plasma and Ayana means its transport into the human body. Now Rasayana methods uh, are very useful methods to carry out this plasma to all the tissues so that the entire tissues in the human body they get a proper nutrition and they prevent old age, restores physical strength, improves complexion, voice, strengthens memory and intelligence and increases immunity. Now there are two types of Rasayanas, one is ambulatory and second is non-ambulatory. What you see here that the patient is kept in a specially prepared three walled chamber which is called as three garbha kuti. The idea of isolating a patient in such a chamber is that he should not come into contact with the heat of the sun or the dry wind. Of course nowadays we can also keep the patient in air conditioned atmosphere so that all these two things can be avoided. While he is there of course first his body is purified by respective purificatory procedures which we have already seen like enemas and nasal procedure, nasal rain drops and other things and once his body is purified he is given a particular type of a rasayana or a medicine which is suitable for his body. Now there are various kinds of rasayanas available, we shall see briefly some of these. Now this is of course this non-ambulatory type of rasayana is a very difficult procedure because in this chamber patient has to remain for about 90 days, 3 months. And I know that for all of us it is not easy thing to get isolated and to remain in the chamber and during all this time the patient is completely isolated from the outside world. He is asked to meditate and to concentrate only on his uh, health and take uh, only the Rasayana. He is not allowed to take any other food other than the Rasayana which is advocated for his constitution. Now there is another type of Rasayana which is called as ambulate ambulatory type of rasayana, I mean <laughs> which you can uh, uh, take when you are carrying out your usual daily activities. Now this is a fruit which is called as Emblica officinalis, it is a very potent rasayana or rejuvenating medicine. Uh, probably all of you know the work that is done by Linus Pauling who has done a lot of research on vitamin C. Now this is a fruit which contains highest amount of vitamin C 
this contains 600 milligrams per 100 grams of fruit and the simple medicine is prepared that is fruit is powdered and is triturated 21 times from the juice of the same fruit and the same fruit is administered to the patient. Another variety of this fruit is also known as Phylanthus niruri and lot of work has been done by a scientist in California, Professor Broomberg, probably all of you know him and this medicine is probably the only medicine which is now available for treating viral hepatitis B. Now this medicine surprisingly has been written in ancient Indian texts in Charaka Samvita you find this medicine particularly for Kamala or jaundice and they have specifically told to take the fresh juice of the fruit. Now the second important Rasayana from this uh, Emblica officinalis Chavan Prash is usually manufactured and it has another other 24 ingredients and you see there the third medicine which is called as Trifala also which has three fruits together. This is Eclipta Alba which is a very potent Rasayana for treating liver disorders. Now we use lot of medicinal wines for treating various diseases and these wines are prepared from the various types of herbs. This is a plant called as Boirivia diffusa Punarnava. This reduces edema of all kinds and is one of the important medicine which is uh, nowadays available to treat prostate, prostate gland growth. Now if we give this medicine at an early stage I am certain that surgery of prostate can be avoided. This is called as another Rasayana which is called as Sida Cordifolia and this is a best Rasayana for children. I know I have taken a lot of time, let us come to the last Rasayana which is called as Guggul or the botanical name is Comifora Mukul. Now this plant is a sandy desert plant and the gum coming out of this plant is used for the treatment of obesity and arthritis. Now a lot of research has already been done by my department where I am working in the University of Pune and my department is known as Interdisciplinary School of Ayurvedic Medicine. Now a team of my colleagues Dr. Prakash Paranspe, Dr. Prahlad Patki and Dr. Bhushan Patwardhan they undertook the trial of Ayurvedic treatment of obesity, a randomized double blind placebo controlled clinical trial in which 70 obese patients were administ administered, they were first randomized into four groups and Guggulu was given to all the groups except of course the placebo and the effect on obesity is extremely good, all the patients they lost their weight and similarly this plant with other combinations of various drugs is very effectively used against arthritis also. So this is a promising plant which is Comifora Gugul and a gum resin of this plant is used for treating hypercholesterol, obesity and arthritis and I am sure that this will be a very good plant for the patients who are suffering from heart diseases due to hypercholesteremia. And at last, of course, uh, I will come to end of my lecture. Well, as we, I started with a prayer, I will all also say a small prayer at the end and then I will finish my lecture. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahi Tejasvina Vadhi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahi Om Shanti 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 The meaning of this prayer is let us live unitedly helping each other. Let God protect us and nourish us. Whatever knowledge, wealth or power we may acquire may that be shared amongst us to give us greater energy and skill. May we never bear ill will and may our lives be ever filled with love, sympathy and compassion towards one and all. 
let there be peace everywhere well at the last let me thank uh, my friend steve and livan for inviting me here and let me thank you also for the patient hearing thank you very much let us thank you too let me let me get a, a remembrance here for you uh, also a reminder that tonight at 8 o'clock, 8 to 9.30, uh, Dr. Renati will be conducting his seminar. Don't want to give you the wrong plaque, Doctor. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is, let's see. Looks like I'm going to have to, though. No. <laughs> it says, well, I'll buy you lunch. How's it? No, 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 no. Actually, we'll get his plaque. But keep in mind, 8 to 9.30 tonight with Dr. Renati in the Beverly Hills room right upstairs. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Let's hear it again. Please.